It is 8 p.m. and here are our top stories. It's not summer yet, but it's about to feel like it. It's a Denver 7 weather action day as sweltering heat makes its way to the metro. Temperatures in the upper 90s and low 100s here for the Front Range and the Eastern Plains tomorrow with a heat advisory in effect. I'll let you know if it'll last all weekend. The January 6th House Select Committee wraps up its bombshell third hearing. Our democracy came dangerously close to catastrophe. The focus, former President Trump's pressure campaign to overturn the 2020 election and how much danger former VP Mike Pence was actually in. Bring out Pence! Bring out! Bring out Pence! Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Danny New and I have been sweating all day. Honestly, you're taking a live look over Denver right now. Let's take a look. There it is. It's still hot, even now. I guess it's technically not summer, but come on. Denver is going to be under another heat advisory tomorrow. Meteorologist Stacey Donaldson joins us now to tell us about it on this weather action day. Stacey, it's hot. It is, and <laughs> it's going to be even hotter tomorrow. Our afternoon highs today were in the low to mid 90s here across the Front Range. It's still 84 degrees outside right now, 89 in Fort Collins at 88 in Greeley. That's one of the reasons the National Weather Service has issued a heat advisory is because it's going to be warm well into the evenings here the next couple of nights and very hot during the day. We also have an air quality alert here for the Front Range all the way south toward Castle Rock and Highlands Ranch. We have a few thunderstorms that have popped up as well, but it's the heat tomorrow with this heat advisory with temperatures near 100 degrees tomorrow afternoon for the metro area all the way up into northeastern Colorado. So we're keeping on our eyes on that because our record afternoon high tomorrow is 100 degrees set just last year in 2021. But tomorrow we'll have upper 90s and low 100s here for our area. And we're going to be talking more about whether or not this will stick around all weekend long in just a few minutes. Thank you, Stacy. <laughs> This extreme heat is especially dangerous for young children. One single father in Thornton reached out saying that he has been struggling with his landlord to restore his air conditioning for him and his baby. Contact Denver 7's Colette Bordelon is getting answers from attorneys about what can be done and joins us live in the studio with more. Colette. Danny, all we've been hearing from anyone walking around the metro is how hot it's been lately, and that heat without AC in an apartment can be unbearable. Blake Skelton lives at this apartment in Thornton with his 11-month-old son and their dog. He's got his windows covered and fans in every room. He says his air conditioning hasn't been working since April and that he's tried to contact his management company several times to come fix it. Yesterday, he says someone came out and put in a new air filter, but Skelton says that's not fixing the problem. For a while, he's been able to manage the heat, but says this past weekend was just so much worse. I'd say it was miserable. <laughs> like me and him, we went for a drive just to get some air conditioning in the car. Um, he couldn't even take a nap because it was so hot. We spoke with this attorney who says issues like these really come down to the warranty of habitability, which covers conditions that affect a renter's health and safety. However, it doesn't cover AC. It does cover heating issues. Now, Danny, I did ask if this attorney thinks AC could ever find its way onto that list. He says there's always a chance, but of course it would be a tricky one to add since there are some gray areas like ways people can try to keep their homes cool without working AC or trying to define an AC when it's not actually working or if it's just not cool enough. The best thing a renter can do is to keep copies of all their correspondence with a landlord. I did read through Skelton's lease and I did not see AC mentioned, at least on my read. Live in the studio. Thank you, Colette. And we are learning more about the murder of a 17 year old in Colorado Springs. She was found dead inside the Walgreens store that she worked at over the weekend. According to court documents, Riley Whitelaw's coworker, 28 year old Joshua Johnson, was found near the dumpster outside the store trying to change clothes the same day Whitelaw's body was found in the break room. Turns out Whitelaw had filed a complaint a year ago about Johnson after unwanted advances were made. She'd even requested to work a different schedule. Johnson is now facing charges of first degree murder and is being held without bond at the El Paso County Jail. All right, and live now to Washington where the Congressional Committee investigating the deadly January 6th attack on the Capitol held its third public hearing. This time, the committee focused on an alleged pressure campaign by former President Donald Trump to get Vice President Pence to overturn the will of the voters and declare Trump the winner of the election. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. 
In their third televised hearing, the House Select Committee investigating the deadly Capitol insurrection, focusing on former President Trump's efforts to stop Vice President Mike Pence from certifying Joe Biden's Electoral College victory. Mike Pence said no. He resisted the pressure. He knew it was illegal. He knew it was wrong. The committee trying to make clear Trump was told by several administration lawyers that Pence had no legal authority to overturn the 2020 election and make him the president. They also tried to draw a direct line between Trump's pressure on Pence and the Capitol attack. Bring out Pence! Bring out Pence! Bring out Pence! Retired federal judge Michael Ludig, a conservative legal icon, testifying he plainly told Pence he could not do what Trump was asking. Would have been the first constitutional crisis since the founding of the Republic. And Pence's former general counsel, Greg Jacob, who was with him in the Capitol on January 6th, agreed. There is no uh, justifiable basis to conclude that the vice president has that kind of authority. While Pence is being praised for performing his constitutional duty on January 6th, just two days before, at a rally in Georgia, Pence himself seemed to question the validity of the 2020 election. I share the concerns of millions of Americans about voting irregularities. And I promise you, come this Wednesday, we'll have our day in Congress. And in a new development, sources confirming to ABC News the January 6th committee is now in possession of emails between Trump legal advisor John Eastman, who drafted the campaign strategy to have Pence block the certification of the election, and Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. The committee chairman telling reporters today he wants to invite Ginny Thomas to speak before the panel soon. Previously released documents show that Mrs. Thomas reached out to state legislators, even Trump's then chief of staff, Mark Meadows, trying to overturn the 2020 election. Jay O'Brien, ABC News at the Capitol. Thank you, Jay. Now, stocks fell sharply today and worry that the higher interest rates will stall the global economy. The Federal Reserve raised interest rates by three quarters of a point yesterday to combat inflation. And today the S&P 500 fell 3.3 percent, the Dow dropped 2.4 percent and the Nasdaq 4.1. In an interview with the Associated Press today, President Biden said a recession is not inevitable. People from Native American tribes across the country are meeting in Fort Collins this weekend to live as their ancestors did in direct contact with the land and to raise awareness for the issues and discrimination that they still face today. They are setting up on the land where Hughes Stadium once stood. And since its demolition, tribal leaders have been working with the city to have some of the land returned to indigenous people who said that they occupied the land long before white settlers. Denver 7's Rob Harris was there today as they set up their village for the weekend. I'm standing at the site of the former CSU Hughes Stadium. Now, usually it's totally vacant. But this weekend, it'll be full of tents and teepees as Native Americans from various tribes come together in community to both heal with one another and to raise awareness to the broader community of issues they say we're facing right now. First and foremost, they say, is sustainability and respecting the earth and natural resources around us. But they also want to raise acknowledgement and awareness of Native American heritage and the injustices they faced. A lot of people, there, when I tell them I'm Native American, they're like, y'all still exist? So it, it's, it's upsetting, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's reality. I'm hoping one day, I'm hoping that this kind of what we're doing here um, spreads awareness. Now some healing has actually already taken place. Last fall, a sweat lodge was set up here by tribal elders, but then was removed by Fort Collins city workers. However, since then, I'm told by leaders they've had very positive interactions with Fort Collins city officials. This event this weekend was approved, and I'm told there will be more events in the months and years to come to keep coming together as a Native American community and to also reach outward and connect with the Fort Collins community and keep these messages front and center. In Fort Collins, Rob Harris, Denver 7. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, cracking down on car thieves. Motor vehicle theft is affecting everyone. Car theft skyrocketing in Colorado. Now local leaders are taking aim directly at the criminals. I want to send a very clear signal to car thieves that Aurora is not the city to steal cars. Temperatures in the upper 90s and low 100s here for the Front Range and the Eastern Plains tomorrow with a heat advisory in effect. I'll let you know if it'll last all weekend. Plus, taking a break from the heat to learn the ins and outs of being a firefighter. One summer camp is getting kids fired up for safety. It makes you more confident in doing things. 